Hello, how's it going? It's Lena. So I decided to set a bit of a lofty goal for myself. I stuck to my New Year's resolution for once and I read a book a week for the last year, 2020, when I had a quite a bit more time on my hands. I decided to try to get back into reading and I ended up reading about 30 books that year. The following year in 2021, I was like, let's try this, let's go all in. I read a book a week. So I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the pros and the cons as well as how I actually stuck to doing it so frequently and tips for doing it for yourself. And at the very end, I'll quickly tell you every book I read this year, just in case you're curious. I graduated from university three years ago. I always want to push myself to be a lifelong learner, to stay curious. One of the best ways you can do that as an adult outside of the academic system is through reading. There is something very powerful about a book. Someone has taken hundreds of hours, if not many, many thousands of hours to research, to write, to edit, to get it published and then to get it into your hands. It's become my favorite way without a doubt to learn something new or to really dive into a topic. I get asked frequently as well how I choose my books. I am a Goodreads diehard. I love setting my goal on Goodreads so I can see my little progress bar slowly growing over time and my like percentage increasing as I like read more books and plug into the system. If you're curious what I'm currently reading, what I've read, what I wanna read, it's on Goodreads. You can follow me down below. book a week has kind of changed my life. When I kind of started off this journey of wanting to fall back in love with reading, I started with a ton of fictional books. I'm somebody who usually does tasks to have a productive outcome. I'm trying to unlearn that. And so I always viewed reading as something that if I was going to do it, I should read some book that was really going to shake things up, maybe a self-help book or like a deeply philosophical text. But because I had this mindset around it, I just like wasn't actually getting myself to the point of doing it. So I started off just reading a lot of really interesting diverse fictional stories that really reignited my love for just sitting down with the book and tearing through it and then slowly with time I kind of felt like I had rebuilt up a bit of this reading muscle and I felt like I was ready to move on to other things fictional books are still great I love sprinkling them in if you're just trying to start reading and getting back into it just read for fun read whatever the hell you want it doesn't have to be anything incredibly profound just get back into that rhythm of it that you know you may have not done since you were a kid so there was a lot of benefits of this for me. I could feel my perspective greatly expanding. It shook up the way I saw the world and related to others, especially when I started reading more books on politics and history and minority experiences. These authors are pulling on a lifetime of experiences, experiences I'll never have or can never really begin to understand without taking the time to really read about it. We all are in our own limited thought patterns day by day, and it takes bringing in something different to finally shake up that, you know, restricted concept that we have. Obviously I can read whatever I want so it's kind of like you get to almost create your own educational or entertainment experience. The library or the bookstore gets to become your teacher and you get to create your own syllabus. You can really dive deep into one topic and become a mini expert. One of the benefits too is that over time I could really feel my focus and my attention span growing. I mean via social media I feel like I often have the attention span of a goldfish sitting down and reading reading more and more over an elongated period of time really transformed my attention span. It's self-care in a lot of ways too. I gained so much mental clarity. It's honestly really helped me with my mental health as well. There's been so many times where I've caught myself scrolling on social media mindlessly, feeling like shit about myself because I'm subconsciously comparing myself to somebody. And anytime I put my phone down and open up a book, I 100% of the time have felt better after doing that. All right, before we go any further, I want to take a quick break to thank our sponsors for today, BetterHelp. I figured on the topic of mental health, this would be a perfect time to talk about BetterHelp. They are essentially an online therapy platform. What I love about BetterHelp is that you can sign up and they will basically assess your needs and match you with a therapist online. It's really incredible professional therapy. They have a huge range of therapists, over 20,000 therapists. So no matter whatever need you might want to highlight, or if you just want help in general, just to talk to somebody, they've got you covered. So the service is available worldwide, which I think is incredible. It could be hard to find a good therapist in your area in person and I also personally enjoy doing it out of the comfort of my own home. In-person therapy can also be really expensive and BetterHelp is less expensive than traditional in-person therapy and they have financial aid available which I think is great. So you can click the link down below, visit betterhelp.com, that's H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people in charge of their mental health with 
the health of an experienced therapist. So I highly recommend you check it out. I'm a huge, huge fan of them. Thanks again to BetterHelp. Let's get back into the video. I definitely throughout this experience became a lot more self-aware and introspective. I just have a much more diverse array of opinions and now knowledge to pull from, especially reading books on psychology or philosophy or self-help books. I could feel myself recognizing unhealthy patterns or being able to call out things that no longer serve me. I mentioned this earlier, but I do think it's helpful to view reading as a bit of like a muscle. We all have it to a certain extent because we all had to read in our education and maybe you barely developed it even then, but it's there and it just takes time of keeping at it, exercising the muscle for it to get stronger and to feel more natural. It really does get easier with time. I noticed I was starting to read more quickly, just naturally. You know, I had a longer attention span and I was just absorbing the information more effectively and more easily. I think a big thing for me as well is it made me a lot more confident in my own opinions or my own intellect or, you know, whatever you want to call it. I have a tendency to self-doubt a lot or I don't want to speak up unless I'm really certain I have a well-formed opinion. For one, I'm like, oh, I actually have spent time to really read and learn about this maybe subject or topic or now I have these diverse experiences that I've been reading about that I can pull into a certain conversation and I felt just more confident in speaking up for the first time in a while, which is honestly really powerful. all the time. How do I actually read this much? How do I make time for it? The biggest thing is to just start somewhere. Start with a book you're excited about or a story you're excited about. Like I said, it doesn't have to be something super profound or something with a productive output, especially from the beginning. We all have so many distractions and obligations where it feels like we can't possibly have any free time to read. I was the queen of saying this, like, oh, I have too much work. I'm gonna free time. One of my first tips is just to find things you can substitute. I wasn't a massive TV or movie watcher before before, but I drastically cut how many hours I've watched TV over the course of the year. If you replace that little binge or, you know, your Instagram scroll time with reading, the books will start to really accumulate. Also think about how many times throughout the day you pull out your phone to distraction, whether it's you're waiting in line or you're waiting for a friend to meet you at a coffee shop. You just took that time to read a book instead. You'll realize how many free minutes there are to start reading. One of my next big tips is to get a Kindle. This really helped a lot more than I was expecting. Yes, I would much prefer to read a physical copy of a book. And I know so many people use that excuse all the time as well but getting a Kindle has really helped me read a lot more. Part of it is the size. I can stick it in a tiny purse. It's super lightweight, so I often will bring it with me, you know, if I'm going on the train to meet a friend, and I can pull it out in the subway. Whereas a thicker book, I'm not gonna wanna have to carry around with me all day, so I'm less likely to bring it. Or if I'm traveling on a long trip and I'm already bringing limited suitcases or luggage, I don't wanna bring an extra book or two that's gonna like weigh me down or add to my suitcase weight. I can download a book in minutes if I'm excited about it instead of having to order it online and wait a couple days or have to go to the bookstore. You're just so much more inclined to bring it with me places. Also, if you want to read more but you don't want to spend a lot of money on books because it can add up, there's an incredible app called Libby. It's basically an app where you connect your local library card number, which is really easy to get if you don't have one, to this app and you can rent different books from your local library completely digitally and upload them to your Kindle. I've done this with so many of my books and I get to read them for free. So you'll have them for two weeks or you can you know, extend your hold. If you wanna read more, if you wanna save money, consider getting a Kindle. My next tip is to really limit distractions. When I'm gonna sit down with a book, I oftentimes just turn my phone on airplane mode and it helps so much and so I I don't want to even see a text pop up on my phone because that will kind of break my concentration. This is when I get my best reading done, I guess you could say. Like I can really get wrapped up in a story or really deeply absorb information more so than I would if I'm just reading here or there. Another thing I found to be really helpful is leave bad books behind. Even if you're 50 pages into a book, you do not have to finish it. I used to be such like a diehard where I was like, I started this book. I have to like push through and get there. Like, no, you don't. Just put it to the side. <laughs> Find something you're going to be more excited to read. Another helpful tip is find Finding an accountability partner. This could be friend. This could be social media in my case. I was posting on my Instagram story every time I read another book. I had a little highlight on my Instagram page of all the books I've read with a little baby like analysis or book report, I guess you could call it, just a few sentences. So by doing
doing that and by stating I had a goal, I had a lot more pressure to actually like push through and get there. Or find a friend or a book club that you can like read your book alongside. I think having somebody to read alongside with, for one, it's more fun, it'll keep you accountable, and it's also really great to kind of be able to verbally process certain ideas and then you can gain more from what their experience with a certain book has been. Another thing I highly recommend is just mark those books up. Mark your Kindle up, highlight, underline, do what you gotta do. I used to be so sacred with my books. You can do this on a Kindle. You can sync all your notes from all your different books. And this helps me retain things a lot better. So a lot of times you can just kind of like go in one ear and out the other. So to actually really sit with it and digest it, I love to mark it up, especially with nonfiction, maybe more educational content. This is a very niche example. I read a book called Theory of Burning on the war in Syria and I was talking to somebody having a little political conversation on the war in Syria and we were talking about the proxy wars that kind of led to the situation that's been going on there and I remember I was like oh there's these different proxy wars that were mentioned in this book and I underlined it I was like texting this person I went and I pulled the book off my shelf I scrolled through I found the section where I underlined I took a photo and I sent it to my friend and we carried on our conversation from there so if I hadn't underlined it I never would have found that so feel free to mark your books up it helps I recommend this to everybody? Honestly, no. Let's talk about a few cons. I would of course recommend setting a reading goal for yourself, reading more frequently in general, but it doesn't have to be a book a week for an entire year. I think it limited me from picking bigger books, longer books, books that were maybe, you know, addressing a more complex issue that would have take more time to really like understand and digest. So I would say adjust your reading goal as necessary. The number of books can kind of be this like vanity metric I've heard it be compared to. So like, you know, pick what's best for you, especially depending on what you're excited to read. Maybe if you want to read a bunch of like lighthearted fictional books, it can be a lot easier to plow through those than if you're trying to read books on like physics or like philosophy or whatever. So like, you know, adjust accordingly. All right, the time has come. Let me speedily read off all the books I read this year. <clears throat> okay, Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, The Hen Artist, Beyond Religion by Dalai Lama, The Vanishing Half, Severance, Throne of Glass, Daisy Jones and the Six, The Underground Railroad, Half of the Yellow Sun, When We Believed in Mermaids, by Visible Women, Died About Us in a World Designed for Men, Extremes of the Ocean, The Road Back to You, Green Lights, Go Tell It on the Mountain, Baby You Should Talk to Someone, A Woman Is No Man, Even Nickel Boys, Searching for Sunday, Leaving the World Behind, Untethered Soul, Wild Lass, Attached, Dark Places, The White Album, Our Time Is Now, Midnight Library, a Picture, Dorian Gray, by Outliers, Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy, 1984, The Prophet, The Song of Achilles, Untamed, Intimations, Honor for Briefly Gorgeous, Eat a Peach, Letters to a Young Poet, Rain on Fire, Shaw, Shaw's, Miss Lodi's Fast Company, To Shake the Sleeping Self, Animal Farm, Woman in Power, Mad Women's Ball, Crying H. Mark, Troubling Love, The Refugees by Viet Nguyen, Zero Burning, A Short History of a Catastrophe, The Defining Decade by Meg Jay. Okay. Again, if you want some recommendations, you can check out my Goodreads. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. I spent a year to make this video and a lot of time reading. really appreciate it. And I would love to hear some book recommendations as well. So leave a little comment down below. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye bye <laughs>